another edition of the Bare Bones. So today I'm going to be looking at the Imperial Knight here. Right? So I've managed to get my hands on, finally, five plans to make the Imperial Knight here. So you need four for the armor and one for the weapon. And then I wanted to compare it with the Guardsman gear and then use it in um, various builds. Uh, so with the intention of finding out is, is it really something I want to maintain? Because maintaining Imperial Knight gear or any class specific gear is pretty expensive if you think about it because you know even even reconditioning you know that's still another plan you'd have to use when you run out and and if you're trying to maintain five of them that's I mean that's going to be really hard so you sort of want to use them you know sparingly so I went and got the gear and it, uh, I had to buy two of the plans at like 700,000 silver each so 1.4 million silver on on the uh, the plan and then I had three from a box. So before we get started let's take a look at what I'm going to look at. So um, I'm going to compare Archangel versus Dragon Blood and then Imperial Knight versus Guardian. And I'm going to show you what my dual build is. Then I'm going to show you some duels and then I'll show you my Agility Sally Forth build. So that's where I went with max agility and then I used Sally Forth as a as a as my ultimate and then some Agility Sally Forth gameplay and then again toughness class and shields build and Toughness, Class, and Shields gameplay, and then my conclusions and summary. Now, the reason I, I'm doing this is because uh, I wanted to see the bonuses that the armor provides, how they work. And so, of course, as we get into it, I'm going to show you what the bonuses are and why I would go with an Agility build and a Toughness build. So, uh, let's get started. So the first thing I look at is, of course, the two weapons. So I have here a, a purple archangel, an epic archangel, and a uh, legendary dragon blood. And these are the two, the two weapons I, I generally use. Now, if you look down the statistics of them, you're going to notice that, you know, the archangel isn't that much better than the dragon blood. And in some cases, the dragon blood's a little bit better. Like piercing armor penetration is 1457. And for Dragon Blood, it's 1450. So I'll, I'll just let you look at those yourself. You maybe want to pause and look at it. But the whole point of it is, is, is it's not that different, right? If you can, if you can get yourself a legendary Dragon Blood, uh, that's going to be the difference, right? So now you notice in the weapon, I'm going to be using when health falls below 25%, health is continuously stored until health reaches 50% again. So I'm doing that uh, because uh, with the toughness build, you want to make yourself way more tanky right uh, usually when the uh, on the dragon blood side I'll use uh, when using mercy of heaven it it uh, nightly vows uh, you know allies will take six percent less damage for eight seconds so when I'm trying to keep a unit alive I generally just switch to the dragon blood but I'm going to be using the archangel exclusively because uh, the whole point is to see if the bonuses that the armor give me uh, are worth it right so but I just wanted you to know that the Dragon Blood is a uh, legendary Dragon Blood can pretty much hold its own with a purple Archangel. So what about about the armor, right? What about the Guardsman sitting next to your uh, Imperial Knight armor? So let's take a look at that. And uh, now, don't get scared about this slide. I've actually got a better one <laughs> coming up that'll amalgamate all of this stuff together. There we go. So you can notice that uh, I'm using a blue helmet, right? Now, do I have a purple guardsman helmet? Yes, I do have one. But I'm trying to go with what I usually go with versus what uh, the Imperial Knight gives me. So why am I using that blue helmet? And uh, every once in a while, I'll go and make, make another helmet just to see uh, if I can get one I want. So if you look, it's got leadership plus 18. And if you look at all my guardsman gear, it's all got some of its itemization points is to leadership. And how did I get that? Well, I just kept making guardsman gear until I got that. And that's because I like to play with more units, and I like to support that unit. So to me, uh, a longsword isn't what you would call you know, a high damage weapon, right? You know, It's more of a support weapon. So if I'm going to be a support weapon, let's have something to support. So that's why that blue helmet's in there. Do I have a purple helmet? Yes. And I'll put it in when I'm using a build that doesn't require those, those extra leadership points. But for the most part, I just use this build. Right? Now, uh, 
if you if you look at my like my my guardsman armor, like that's twenty three leadership. So obviously I want to keep that. And I got lucky and got a legendary armor and a legendary uh, imperial knight armor as well. So everything else that matches up. Everything else matches up, but the helmet. But one of the interesting you're going to see is when I look at all of it as a combined slide. If I look at it, all those all those numbers together, and there's a very simple way to do that. You just go to the go to the your, your character page and it'll show you so let me bring that slide up one second so the so this slide basically shows the amalgamation of all of your weapons because it's just a, a summary so I didn't even have to go calculate it all it was all right there for me all I did was look at the differences so you can see that I'm, I'm gonna run two builds I'm gonna run uh, toughness and agility now I'm not gonna show you guardsman uh, gameplay because if you go back to my old videos that's what I'm doing I'm either running a toughness ability with my guardsman, I'm running an agility build with my guardsman. And you're going to wonder why the agility? Well, strictly because it does give you more penetration um, and damage depending on uh, what you're using with either slashing or, or piercing. And I like to use a musket once in a while, so when I do that I want my grenades to pen better and my bullets to pen better. So that's why I use an agility with the guardsman. So why am I going to use an agility build with the Imperial Knights? Well, I'm testing the Imperial Knight uh, armor, so um, I'm going to see if using Sally Forth is a good idea. Now, I generally don't use Sally Forth uh, because I find that I like Clash of Shields much better to get me in and out, but I thought, what the hell, new armor, new weapon, let's try Sally Forth to see if it works, and you're going to see my, in my conclusions, I'll give you my, my, my opinion on that. So basically, what you're going to see is you're going to see two stat builds toughness and agility and three um three uh skills builds so basically i'm going to use a slightly different build for when i do the duels and a slightly different build for toughness and a slightly different build for agility but before we get into before we get into that let's actually talk about what we're looking at in this slide and again you're going to notice just like the weapons there's not really a whole lot of difference between the two builds if you stick them side by side they both have you know, in the toughness build, they have in excess of 30,000 uh, uh, health. But when you look down, and when you look down the other abilities, it's really, it's like less than 100 difference in all this, the categories. Uh, even even though, if you look at the, the guardsmen, the guardsmen for some reason seem to have better armor, even with that blue helmet. Uh, and that carries over to the agility build as well. So again, you're not losing much when you're, when you're switching from guardsmen to Imperial Knight. So you're not you're not losing a whole hell of a lot. So if you're not losing a whole hell of a lot, what are you gaining? Well what you're gaining are some of new abilities. Or rather, some enhancements to abilities you currently have. You want to design your your your, your skills and your build around those enhancements. So what are they? Well as you can see, as the slide comes up, you get an extra three seconds on your nightly vows and an extra four percent on your mercy of heaven. And uh, it turns out that extra four percent is pretty huge because you go from like in a toughness build, a you go from a, uh, a thirty-six hundred uh, instant heal to yourself to something in the forty-six hundred. You're going to see that uh, in the gameplay, and you get that extra three percent on nightly vows. Now um, that doesn't affect it so much when you're charging somebody because usually you're well within your charge range when you use those nightly vows and you charge and you hit and you smack. But it also helps better when you are. Uh, trying to get them to a supply point. So there's another three seconds that they get that extra bonus of, of uh, speed. So that's what you're going to do. So if you're going to use um, your Imperial Knight armor, you have to build those builds around those two abilities. Otherwise, you may as well use Guardsmen, right? If you're not going to use Knightly Vows and you're not going to use uh, really have a good Mercy of Heaven build, then you may as well use something else. Now, I did use Guardsmen, or sorry, uh, Imperial Knight with the agility build. Because at the same time, again, that extra 4% boosts you up a few more health in your agility. Because in the, um, in the uh, uh, toughness build, you're over 30,000, and uh, you lose about 7,000 health when you go uh, to the agility build, right? So even that extra 4% while you're healing yourself is better than not having that 4%. So it's still worth it if you're going to run an agility build and sally forth. So let's take a look at the first thing I'm going to do, and that's going to be the dual build, right? So here's what I've done with with uh, a dual build. Now, with a dual build, you're not going to need nightly vows. Like, why would you 
why would you want it unless you're trying to chase down a, a range guide? But I find that whenever I'm uh, doing a range guide, they generally just kite me all every kite me everywhere, and if I can out heal his damage, I get a draw. <laughs> you know, so so I generally don't do range people because I know it's either a draw or a guaranteed loss. So what have I removed uh, nightly vows with? Well, I took out shield. Bash. I took out nightly vows and I put in shield bash, right? So right there with with Imperial Knight, I'm already not using one ability, right? But I'm going to go with the toughness uh, build, uh, toughness uh, build during the duels to really maximize that Mercy of Heaven. So I'm going to use Mercy of Heaven three, and you can see it gives you 10% immediately, and then with the uh, the armor, you're going to get another four, so 14%, and that again works out to about 4,600 instant heals, and that's pretty big. So again, I'm going to use Sally Forth because that's uh, you know um, a damage. A damage uh, ability, unlike Clash of Shields, which does, while it does do damage, it, it's not as extensive as Sally Forth. However, I found that uh, using Sally Forth was actually kind of difficult, and you'll see why in a minute. And so this is this is that, that, that dual build that I would not use anywhere else but in a duel if I was going to use uh, um, Imperial Knights. So let's take a look at some duels. Now the whole point of these builds is to essentially outlast you. It's just to outheal you and outlast you, and uh, what little damage I do just sort of chip you down. And, and you can see that's happening. Like he does this incredible amount of damage to me, and I just pokey pokey pokey. Keep the keep the shield up, pokey pokey pokey. And uh, when my mercy of heaven is up, I use it. And that's pretty much the whole strategy with a uh, long sword. And because I seem to miss <laughs> with everything else. Like I, you just watch, watch me do that shield bash, and I, I, I missed. Because you'll find that uh, they can just roll over out of range. And they can do the same thing with, with the Sally Forth. Like it, as soon as they see me using that Sally Forth, they just move, right? Because uh, they're not going to sit there and let you hit it, right? But look at the damage he's doing to me, and look at me healing him. I'm just slowly batting him down. And you can't do this against a range guy, because the range guy is just going to run away from you. You can't use it with Sally Forth because, again, you, you have no closure. You have no ability to close with the range guy. So if you're going to duel a range guy, you should use Clash of Shields, right? Because at least you can have this small chance of knocking him over and smacking him, you know. But mostly I lose. So I don't do any duels with um, any range guys because I know that I'm not going to win, right? So, but, yeah, as you can see, I'm full health. Right. I start out with over 30,000, and I heal 4,600 in an instant like that, and then I get about 600 a, uh, a second for a little bit. But it's boring as hell for probably for this guy, because he knows he can't win now, because I'm just out. I'm out healing his damage. He can't get near me. But all is not lost. Uh, what What is going to come is you're going to find that there are... Uh, guys that I can't heal through. And that's a victory. And like I said, he, he, it's almost not fair for me to heal like that, but it's one of my abilities, so I gotta do it, right? And now a pike. So again, the strategy is simple. You know, block, block, block. Dodge his damage if I can. Absorb his damage if necessary, and heal through it. And in my opinion, the Pike is one of the two OP classes of the game. The other one being small, of course. Oh, see, look now, that's rare. I usually don't land that, but you'll notice that it did about half damage to him, right? And that's a medium player, so it doesn't even do that much damage uh, to a heavy armor. But it will do about half the damn. It'll take about half the life of a medium armor user. And I'm just waiting for my heal to come up. But I don't even don't even need it. But like all of these medium armor classes, he is doing incredible amounts of damage to me. But I'm just healing through it. Now we've got 
an Odachi player. Now he he could be a little bit difficult because you know theoretically he's got the ability to turn his damage into health. Did he remove that from his build? I don't know because you know they got that one little uh, rune that can uh, translate some of that back into damage, right? So I don't know what his build is. But again, I'm just doing the same thing I always do, which is block and poke, right? Certainly not glamorous, but it gets the job done. But as we're going to see, not all the time. And again, he managed to dodge the first switch, but not the second. Or the first tap, but not the second. But unfortunately, I found in matches, like in the siege, uh, I could rarely connect with that selling board. Like in, when I first started using it, I could rarely connect with it. Guys would just sort of see me doing it and, and, and run away. Okay, so now I'm fighting a, a heavy armor guy, and it's a maul. Now, this is actually the second maul I fought. The, the first maul I fought, and the pole axe guy I fought. Uh, <laughs> I, I know you're not going to leave this, but I can't find the damn footage. I don't know where the hell it went. Uh, so it's not there. So the first maul I thought, I thought, uh, I thought, okay, I'll just, as I was with the medium guys, I would just tank the damage. But that turned out to be a mistake. The first mall guy absolutely kicked my ass. Like, he, I, I could not uh, tank the damage. So what I'm doing here is I'm kind of being kind of frigid. I'm staying away from him and trying to, like, when he starts his abilities, I kind of back away. Right? I don't try to stay in. Um, see how I'm getting out of there? Because the reality is, is I can't seem to beat this guy, right? Although it was kind of funny. The first guy I fought, if I remember, see, so just walked away from my, my Sally. The first guy I fought, the first thing he did was pick me up and toss me into a, into a building. And I'm like, well, why would you use that in a duel? <laughs> you know, Because <laughs> all you do is you're running me around. You're not doing anything with it, right? But uh, this guy didn't do that. Um, but what winds up happening here is we just dance around like this. And, and we get a draw, right? Uh, I can tank his damage as long as they don't let him hit me, like as, as little as possible. And I'm not even doing that much. Like, look at the heavy armor. Like, I'm not really penetrating enough to... Unlike a, unlike a medium armor guy, where I could act, absolutely do some decent damage to him, this guy... And look, he, he just interrupted my, uh, my, uh, my sally port there. So that's one thing I found, because I, I don't have the poleaxe footage. Uh, between this mall and the poleaxe guy, like, the poleaxe guy kept me interrupted all the time and beat me so quickly I was surprised. Uh, so... For some reason, the, the Polax um, builds have numerous interrupts, and I just couldn't get anything off. So I, I unfortunately don't have that footage. I don't know where it went, and I, I swear I didn't delete it on purpose. But I will tell you for a fact that the Polax absolutely crushed me. Uh, and the first mall absolutely crushed me as well. And the only way... There we go. I finally landed one. But again, he interrupted me mid-swing. Mid, mid I got the first hit off, and he interrupted mid-swing. And it was the same with the pole axe. Every time I I, I, uh, I tried to do anything, it was interrupted immediately. So that's one thing you should be aware of if you're a longsword player, is that you got to dance around the mall. Uh, I didn't fight him enough to see if I can actually get a win out of another one. Uh, a lot of guys weren't interested in dueling that day. Uh, but you could see that it was all I could do to keep him off me, to, just to get a draw. Uh, and uh, could I beat a pole axe? I think I could. Uh, but like I said, the first guy I dueled with the pole axe, like just crushed me so quickly, it was unbelievable. And there you go, there's a duel. There's the, there's the duel. So that's that's um, the uh, the dueling footage, that's the uh, the way of it. Like I said, against a medium a medium uh, armor using guy, I, I, I won quite handedly. I didn't really use one of them. Uh, it was against only against the heavy armor guys that I had a issue. Obviously, I didn't fight another longsword guy because you're just going to sit there and it's going to be a draw. And I didn't fight a uh, range guy because they'll just kite me around and, and I wouldn't be able to catch them unless I use Clash of Shields, which obviously I, I wasn't at this point. And even then, like I can knock them down, do a bit of damage, and they can usually roll away, or they can they have you know kiting abilities that just sort of keep you off them. So, so most longsword players know already. You know, you're not going to. It's going to be very hard to chase down a range guy. Like you can if you use Clash of Shields, uh, but again, it's 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 not as as uh, easy as let's say beating up a, a medium uh, armor guy who has to come at you. 
and uh, so that's that. So let's just take a look at our next uh, build, which is going to be the Agility Sally Forth build for um, in Sieges. So like the dual build, I'm going to be using uh, Sally Forth, but instead of uh, toughness, I'm going to go to Agility. Uh, I'm going to not use um, the Shield Bash. Instead, I'm taking Nightly Vows. So I'm taking Nightly Vows and Mercy of Heaven, obviously for the uh, bonuses that the uh, Imperial Knight's armor gives you, and I am of course going to be taking uh, with Valor because I, I like being able to kick you when I get a chance, and for the uh, AOE. Uh, so what is agility? Let's uh, take a quick look at this agility slide and we'll just remind ourselves what it does. So as you can see it says here that each point of agility increases your hero's piercing damage, slashing armor penetration, and blunt armor penetration by six points. So uh, obviously when I'm using Sally Forth and I'm slashing, I'm going to get uh, more pen, and when I'm doing that final dive down, I'm going to get more piercing damage. And then of course the blunt, uh, that that's uh, useful if you were using Shield Bash, but I'm not. Uh, and if I'm using my musket, which I'm also not. So that's agility. Now let's, uh, let's actually start looking at some footage of the um, battles I went into. Now, now these battles, in, in my previous videos, you'll notice that I, you know, was really emphasizing the unit, the unit, the unit, and I was always trying to get my unit into uh, where it could do the most damage. In these videos, what I'm trying to do is do that, but at the same time, putting myself into a position where I can fight players, right? So it's a little bit of a different play style for me. It's it's more of the unit supports me play style, which I don't generally do. If you remember my um, foot cavalry videos, I'm, I'm more of a I support my unit guy, but Let's give it a go. Let's see if this works. And uh, I'm going to do a lot of really quick, uh, really quick videos to show you various uh, mistakes that I've made, right? Because I'm going to show you my mistakes. All right, so let's get started. <coughs> All right, so we're in the fortress. I am using Palace Guard. Uh, since my heavy sword video, they've, they've kind of grown on me. I still haven't put any points into their unit tree, but they are still a max out unit. And I do like them. I'm going to come up here and watch this. Challenge this guy. And he just rolls away. Picks me up. Uh, I think he wants to marry me. I don't know. Kicks me. And runs away. Like, complete dis <laughs> complete contempt for me. Doesn't even want to bother to kill me. But that's that's my first attempt at, at using Sally Ford. I walked up to a mall guy. He just rolled away. And, and, and uh, that was it. Uh, so the next one here. Now, this is another instance of a... Dachi player. I'm going to hit him with Sally Forth and he just rolls off. So the first few ones I did, it was very, very hard to, to actually connect uh, with it. I mean, those are, those of you guys who actually use Sally Forth quite a bit, um, maybe use some kind of knockdown to use it. I, I don't know. But uh, when I first started doing this, I couldn't connect. Now, this is the first time I think I'm actually going to be able to connect with it. But again, it's not fully. Like, I, 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 I hit him with, uh, with Valor knock him down, but I didn't run forward, but I did get him with that third one, right? With the third press. Uh, so it was the first time I actually really connected. Uh, now, this is another example of uh, getting interrupted, right? I'm going to charge this guy. And I come in, I try the sally forth, and instant interruption. Now, I do get the kill on him, uh, on a guy, but that was my unit that wasn't necessary. But again, here's the agility um, build. Like, I got a little bit more penetration, a little bit more damage, so I was able to beat him down. But usually when I'm killing players, I'm killing them with my uh, unit, not with my, my hero. So that's that's what's going to happen here, is I'm going to try to get more kills with the hero as opposed to the unit. Now, this mall, he's going to come at me, and I'm going to get a full off on him. I'm going to actually get the whole thing. But you'll notice, I only take it down to half. Like, here we go. And I only got I only got down a half, so it's it's more of a finisher, I'd say, if you're up against a a, a heavy heavy armor guy. And you can see how I was just completely like wrecked and killed there. There we go again, and I missed. I got I got a piece of it, but it's it's I find this Sally Force so hard to. Eventually, I did get a really good run with it. You know, 
here's a heavy armor user. I come in. I actually got a slight piece of him. The muskets took a piece of him as well. So I'm going to ch try and chase him down. And I come around this corner. And that's not good. <laughs> you know, but we did kill him. And again, that's maybe that's a little extra agility I get because of my pen. But I, I ran away uh, from this uh, pike guy because of those those range units around the corner there. I am going to come back after him, though. Like I said, I'm, I'm trying to be more proactive with with my 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 tune as opposed to bringing a unit with me most of the time. Like I, I think I, my unit at this point is dead, but I'm going for it anyway. Now, notice that heal there, and I get an extra, it's like 3,600, I get like 521. The 260 there is because he got me below, uh, there we go. He got me below 25%, uh, so the rune was starting to work. But you'll notice I actually got a good chunk of him there. Uh, like with Sally Forth, uh, before eventually I he brought his he brought his unit up to, to even the odds. Now here's a, a good reason to use nightly vows. I charge the guys in, nightly vows, bam, and in they go, right? Because I, I was showing Sally Forth off, but I was actually using nightly vows quite a bit. Uh, I actually never used to like nightly vows, but uh, about six, seven, eight months ago. I started really realizing the potential for it, so I use it a lot anyway. Uh, and there's that mer nice mercy of heaven, and I'll just head out. Now, I'm checking this corner out. There's a, 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 a musket unit there. I'm going to hit him with my paladins. Now, watch what this other longsword guy does. This is why you really want clash of shields. Check this out. Bam! Hammers me. Knocks the charge down. It's really useful. Now, I'm going to get in on him anyway and, and, and kill him. Uh, wreck his unit. Pull in here. There's my knightly. There's the Sally Ford. Wham! You're dead. Finally get a really good beat on with it. Like, I was starting to get better with it. I still prefer Clash of Shields because of the utility. Uh, but this is where I really started to, to do well in Master of Course. I said, okay, I did well. I didn't want it to, uh, to a toughness build. But I was overall satisfied with that attack. Now I'm going to do a charge here uh, and push it forward as much as I can. But I like the fact that when I came around that corner, I mean, that longsword did a really good job of dropping that charge. I always love it when I kill them all. Uh, and, and we came, we, I came around, I did some kill, I had a buddy, sh another guy showed up, and we just kept pushing, right? Uh, and there was like two or three kills there. We got like 40 seconds left in the match. This guy's going to go down, bam, another one. So at this point, I really, really had done, uh, started to do a little bit better with uh, Sally Forth. But overall, just that one fella uh, coming up and interrupting that charge with the uh, class of shield is reasonable enough alone to uh, take that over Sally for Simply because, here's my snap of vows, boom, and I go. Like if I had class of shields there, I would have been able to, to come in and hit that, that, that pike unit from the side, those halberds, and that would have allowed my, my uh, paladins to really get in better. So, uh, but hey, it was good. It was good. I liked it. I enjoyed it at that last that last battle. But I think overall, I like the uh, Clash of Shields better. But we'll we'll get into that later. So the next thing we're gonna look at is the toughness uh, Clash of Shields build. Now, I'm looking at the time here, and we're already up to 30 minutes. I had a whole bunch of uh, video lined up for it, and I decided to knock it down to really just two. So we're gonna look at uh, just two videos. And each will be there to emphasize one thing, right? So uh, basically, Knightly Vows and the, uh, the really good use of the Mercy of Heaven. So uh, let's just quickly remind ourselves what the uh, toughness gives us. All right, so as you can see right here, each point of toughness increases your hero's maximum health by 100. So that gives you about 7,000 health. And uh, that, it's kind of odd that it would be, you know, you get roughly the same amount of health out of the Guardsman and the the uh, Imperial Knight. You would think that the Imperial Knight being a much harder set to get would have more base stats, but that's not the case. And of course here is my build. So as you can see I'm going to be using Knightly Vows, and that's going to go from uh, 12 seconds to 15 seconds because of the um, Imperial Knight armor. And Mercy of Heaven, which will give me, uh, instead of a 10%, uh, instantly restoration of health. It's going to give me a 14%, which will be just over 4,600. And my um, 
two percent for every ten, two uh, percent every second for ten seconds, that will go up to six hundred and uh, twelve, I believe, somewhere in there. And then, of course, the um, if you look on the Archangel, when my health is below twenty-five percent, that goes up to about three twelve, somewhere in there, somewhere in there. I don't remember off the top of my head, but it it all goes up handily because, of course, if you look at the Imperial Knight, my health is now sitting at thirty-three thousand. So. That's a substantial increase from what it was before. So this this um, this obviously makes you very much more tanky and uh, able to survive better. So let's just see how that works. And of course, I'm sorry. And I'm, I'm also using Clash of Shields uh, three as um, that will allow me to like interrupt people trying to get into my uh, unit, allow me to sort of very quickly chase down people who are really close. So Clash of Shields three uh, is what I'm going to use here. So let's take a look at the first video and see how that goes. So we're at Halon Ford. I've got uh, my palace guards braced. I've got a cannon down. They've already burst in the door and they're coming through the, uh, they're coming through. So what I'm trying to emphasize here is the fact that all that extra toughness allows me to stay in the fight longer and uh, allows my palace guards to also stay in the fight longer. The interesting thing is these palace guards are max level, but I have no points in the unit tree and they're very tough. Right, they're they are the defensive line. They are very tough. They take all the, the knockdowns and the grenades, and they just you notice there's not a lot of damage there. And there's a Metley Vows charge, and again I brace them. But again, I'm staying alive. My health isn't going down too badly, and but when it does, boom, that massive heal just comes right up. There it is, 4600, 665 on the on the ten, uh, on the two percent, ten seconds. So they have a hard time breaking, and that's the whole point of, of the toughness, is that it's very difficult to, to break. You need multiple characters. Clash of Shield goes through, interrupts them all. Got this axe builder behind me, just staying in the protection, I guess. So I brace again, and I'm probably going to charge out of here. But but basically, I'm, I'm trying to hold the position, right? Like I'm trying to not, there's a connect of Vows charge, boom, there we go. I'm trying to, to, to you know, win the match by holding this position. So I figured I, I advanced forward because I could I could push them out and then I'm gonna go right back. I'm not gonna pursue. Because these guys are too slow to pursue. <clears throat> and obviously if you look up there it's probably a bad idea. Yeah I'm really starting to like these palace guards. I never used to like them but because uh, they were too slow but now that I'm using them for their intended purpose they're starting to grow on me. And again I'm nicely braced. Now my unit is pretty much gone, but I'm still sticking around because I want to help uh, everyone else around me. So you can see that 332 coming up. That's that uh, ruin. Bam, 4654, and now 665, and 312, all coming at the same time. So that's huge. Look at, look at my health just come right back up. And I'm helping to keep these uh, these pikes in. Now that now he tries to do that advance and I obviously clash and shields right through it, stopping it. And trip shield comes through. And it was just a coincidence that I, 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 I knocked uh, I, I clash of shields through those pikes when the uh, uh, SARS came through. I didn't know they were there, but it worked out. Okay, now next one. Okay, so this is um, a, a real demonstration on how, how uh, Mercy of Heaven and Medley Vows work really well when you're not using a charge. Right? So the beauty of these uh, stalwarts is this particular one, I've, I've got like lots of nice epic doctrines. You can see there's a heal doctrine there as well. 
so I can heal them and they can heal themselves. It's, it's a small heal, it's like 150 a second, but it's still, still better than nothing, right? Now where the Knightly Vows comes into play is they're going to take B and I'm going to redeploy to the uh, to the uh, final point. And Knightly Vows is going to get me there. That 15 seconds of Knightly Vows is going to get me there a little quicker. Now see they've taken B now. Now I notice that B's captured now so I'm going to go down I'm going to try and uh, defend the main point. Mercy of Heaven. And then Knightly Vows. So how quick they're moving for stalwarts, right? 25% faster, so that's that's pretty good. And look at this. This guy's going right to the main point, I guessed right. Bring it. If I had been a little bit quicker, I would have been able to brace in front of that because he wasn't charging, so I would have had a field day with him. But instead, I got to catch him. Now he's capping. And I charge, just to interrupt his charge. And he just sort of lets me him up. Now, watch this. He's going to try and do his little ulti. And if I was anybody else, I probably would have been dead there. But again, I got 33,240 health, so it's kind of difficult to kill him in one round like that. And look at me. I'm getting like 1,000. A thousand health a second back because of the ruin and the, uh, the heal over time. Then I want to go back, so I send him back, and again, Knightly Vows gets him back there. So when you're using like, uh, uh, you know, like Imperial Knight armor with a toughness build, your survivability does go way up. I mean, you're looking at 33,240 health, 14% instant mercy of heaven heal, and you're looking at, you know, uh, 612. 665 over time uh, for 10 seconds dot and then if you got the rune on there that's another 312 over time so you know your survivability goes way up right so so that's that's an imperial knight toughness build now you're not doing as much damage as you would be with an agility or a strength build but you you know you don't do that much damage anyway so it's really you know more conducive to use your strength right and the strength of the imperial knight armor is the big heels, right? So you may as well use toughness, right? You may as well use toughness. Now, in the Guardsman, am I using toughness? Not so much, because it's a different bonuses, right? Different armor. So I'll just use an agility build, but I'll use Mercy of Heaven and Clash of Shields, right? Uh, but I think if I'm going to use uh, Imperial Knight from now on, I'll probably use a toughness build, because it's pretty hard to get away from those massive heels, right? Uh, is it worth maintaining? Is it worth getting a, uh, you know, getting the plans and, and using it. I don't think so, you know, in, in the sense that, um, you know, the, it's 700,000 silver per plan, right? And the Guardsman armor is pretty much identical to the Imperial Knight armor. A l not quite as good, but pretty damn close, right? And the Guardsman armor is so much easier to maintain. And the, the beauty of the Guardsman armor is that, you know, if you're the kind of player that likes to switch weapons in the middle, you can do that. You can like, oh, I you know, I'm using this unit, so I'll switch to my poleaxe, you know, that kind of thing, right? So that's what, that's the versatility of the Guardsman armor. It's very easy to switch, switch weapons. If you're using your Imperial Knight armor, you're pretty much stuck with the longsword, right? And I would suggest that you use a toughness build, simply because that's what the bonuses are in this in this armor. So, I mean, if you can afford to, if you know, you're, if you play like nonstop, and you can afford to get those five plans and maintain maintain this, this armor, I mean, go for it. But I, I think I don't think you need it. Like, if, if you're a player that, that has been going, oh, man, i got to get that Imperial Knight armor, here's the differences. So you can decide for yourself whether or not you want to go that route, right? So anyway, um, again, this this uh, this uh, video is way too long. So thanks for watching. Uh, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe on the way out. And I'll see you next time. Cheers.